That doesn't make any sense. I don't understand what that means at all. So, instead, I propose rhythm should be postulated as the intervals of time between notes, rests, or a combination of both. Never forget. Never forget. 2012. Copyrighted. To me, Rhythm equals energy. It can do a ton of things for your music and should never, ever be neglected or just taken for granted. It can spice up all generic chord progressions. Um, if you have like a basic 1-4 chord progression, you know, C to an F or C to a G, um, just experiment with moving the chord placement around. You know, put the second chord uh, a beat ahead or a beat later. Even the simplest timing um, variations can really completely change the mood of your song. It also breathes life into lead melodies. Um, one thing that I like to practice is that if you're repeating a phrase, try altering the rhythm slightly the second time or third time that you're doing that phrase. Even if it's one note within it, it can definitely add that variation to your song. The, the, basically what you want to avoid is avoid as much repetition as possible because even someone that isn't Versed in music, they can hear it, and subconsciously they can feel tired of hearing the exact same thing over and over again. And rhythm has an extremely subconscious impact on that. And sometimes rhythm can carry a song all by itself. Um, the Amen break for Jungle, <laughs> and, you know, some people think that it's very overused. I love it personally. Um, some people don't. Get out of here, Joe. <laughs> um, but the jungle is a genre of music that is completely composed on just alterations of the Ahmed break. Um, it's basically a drum break that has been chopped up from a song uh, Amen Brother by the Winstons? Is that? Does anyone know? Winstons? Yeah, YouTube. Did. What's that? YouTube it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to YouTube it. It's on there. Oh, this John anyway. Oh, hold Yeah, but anyway. Um, or a signature drum part. Uh, some pop music examples I can think of. I don't know if you see underneath that, uh, the balloon and the gear up there, but I think of uh, In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins, or Walk This Way, Aerosmith. Those are two basic, very uh, pop rock examples that I can think of. And I don't know, like if you ever hear a song on the radio and you're just hearing the intro, you hear like a couple notes of the introduction of the song, you automatically know it, that's an awesome feeling, but for me, if you can hear like an introduction drum beat and you know what type of song it is just by that drum beat, that is an extremely good feeling because you're hearing something that's automatically priming your memory and it's just rhythmically based, which is extremely interesting to me. All right, now we're gonna go on to some rhythm basics. Um, some of this stuff may seem very, very basic to people um, who are a music nerd like I am, but bear with me. It all starts with the measure, or sometimes called the bar. The measure is used to measure, for lack of a better term, a musical or rhythmic phrase. It's used to communicate with other musicians what part we're talking about, um, or in composing, we split it up into subdivisions of measures so that we know how to count it and keep time with ourselves. The most common bar in modern Western music is 4-4, four, four. and I'm not going to get in-depth into alternate time signatures or progressive things in 12-27 or uh, that doesn't even make sense as a time signature, but for the purposes of this, it's all going to uh, stay in 4-4, four, four. and what that basically means is that each measure will consist of four beats, and each will be a quarter note long in length. Applying this to Alice DJ. The most basic conceptualization of this um, is to use one phrase as a measure. And this is probably the most simplistic way of viewing rhythm within LSDJ, unless you're a prodigy like Dio De Avedi, who has like 8,000 phrases and it's all perfectly in time somehow. Within this, rhythm basics still apply. And here's how you can basically conceptualize rhythm within a phrase. A whole note in Alice DJ would just be if you put a note on the zero line, so the first line, and you had it going throughout the entire measure. And the reason why it's called a whole note is because it goes through the whole measure. It goes through all four beats. Next would obviously be 
half notes in us, DJ, where it would be spinning that up divided by two. So you have the first note being on the zero line, and the next one would be on the eight. So each one has an equal spacing of eight lines per note. The next one would be quarter notes in us, DJ, and this was where um, the 4-4 four, four time signature comes in because it's four beats to a measure and this is where it's probably the most basic conceptualization of rhythm in us, DJ, because here you have the entire measure here all at once. What's up, Anna? <laughs> here you have the entire measure all at once um, and if you put a note or a hi-hat or any type of um, note data on 0, 4, 8, and C, you'll be perfectly in 4-4 four, four time. Breaking it down again, we have eighth notes, which is just dividing by two once again, and that would be one on every other line. And then finally, you know, as crazy as it looks, sixteenth notes in LSDJ would be one line per note or one note per line. And this is important that I actually um, highlighted it like this because this goes on to something a little more in depth, and this is where it starts to get a little crazy within LSDJ because there's actually a smaller subdivision than the 16th note, smaller than the line, and it is ticks. Ticks are basically um, the smallest unit of measurement within trackers. They're an intangible, invisible way of how many trackers, including LSDJ, calculate time. With each line, or 16th note, there are six ticks as a default within LSTJ. The reason for this is to have accurate song tempo, or BPM, beats per minute. So basically I have that little amazing MS, or MS Paint graphic down there at the bottom that shows you six ticks per line. Um, you can change... Is that? Yeah, I'm graphic designer now. Um, this is a... Uh, this is important because if you were to switch and make it five ticks per line, for example, in LSTJ, it would actually be reflecting an incorrect BPM measure. So if you had a song that you wrote, say, in 120 beats per minute, so your tempo is 120, or is 120, and you were to export your song and dump it into Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton Live, and you were to warp that first beat on the metronome, it wouldn't be in time, even though that LSDJ says 120 and uh, Pro Tools says 120, because the bass is always six ticks per line. So the line, just how it is. Now, so far we covered definition of rhythm, rhythm basics, and application in the LSDJ. How do we become more expressive in rhythm? How can we use these tools to be more creative and really get into rhythm design within something that is just 16 steps per phrase. And the answer to that is groove. And now I'm going to actually switch to something that's everyone's favorite, which is audience participation. Go to Ableton Live right now and boot it up. Basically what we're going to do is the best thing um, to conceptualize groove is that a lot of people don't exactly know how to define it, but you can hear it. And I have basically um, three sets of drum loops right now, and I'm gonna play one, then the other. I'm gonna play the red one, and then the blue one. And we're gonna see which one you guys think has groove. And it, you don't need to have any type of educated guess whatsoever, just which one do you think grooves more? So I'm actually gonna play the first one right now. Oh wait, Joey, we need audio. You need to bounce up audio right now. But basically, that's what we are going to do. We're going to look at the red one and the blue one just as soon as I get a connection. <laughs> Yo, who's playing auto scroll right now? You hear that? Yeah, that's auto scroll. And fed. <laughs> oh, it's you? Oh, nice. Oh, it's the groove. All right, let's see. You got sound? All right, we got sound. All right, cover yours. This might be loud. Fire in the hole. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right, this is the first one. Let's listen to a bit. I'll let it play for a couple 
more beats, and then we can switch to the other one. Switching. Let that play, and then I'll go back to the first. Keep in mind, which one do you think grooves more? Let me bring this up so I can bring it up over the gear. You guys see that now, the waveform? This is the one that doesn't have group. And if we were to zoom in real quick here, um, each one of these lines, you see it says one here, over here on the far left. And then here it says 1.2. This means the second beat. 1.3 is the third beat. 1.4 is the fourth beat. Um, if we were to zoom in here, this one has groove because if you were to look, this hit doesn't line up on the beat almost at all. It's very off. If I were to switch over to the one that has no groove, I modified it so that it lined up perfectly on the beat. And I'll play him back and forth so that we can visualize it now. And you can probably conceptualize it a little better if you see it. So this is the first one. And what? This is the human groove. Here we go. See, that's playing there. And if you look real close on see it's a little weak. And if I bring in the metronome, it might be up here a little better. And we can accentuate this if I were to make this even more after the groove. So if I were to just take that hit and go like that. That's not horrible. I'll do this. See that snare right there, I'm gonna move it even more off the beat. See it getting more and more off time. Off. I don't know how that happened, but that was really cool. So isn't that called syncopation? It's not called syncopation, it's actually, this is what, um, it is, it's, yes, the human element, because if you're playing along with a metronome, you're never ever going to automatically sync perfectly to the click track. Um, a lot of drummers hate recording with click tracks because they have this bizarre feeling that their music is going to sound automatically quantized and perfectly on the beat, but unless you are a machine, it is impossible to be perfectly on time. And that shouldn't be viewed as a bad thing. That's actually what I consider the human element of group. Oh, let's try again. We did good in the first one. Let's do this next one. And I can't... First, you're not supposed to see that because then I'm cheating. Bam! You guys may know the answer already, but let's just do it. Alright, let's, let's try this. So we're play this one for a little bit. Alright, we're gonna switch over. Remember, keep in mind which one you think has groove and which one does not. Switching again. Raise your hand as soon as you think you have an answer. Ryan? Ryan, did you have this? I thought you were saying peace or something. Oh, you were saying yeah. Say, yeah. Ryan, what do you got? Here. Two? Yeah, just raise your hand with um, a one or a two. You got two? Three is not an answer, Paul. Thank you for your effort. <laughs> the answer to that one is two. Zoom in real quick. See that one slightly off the beat there. Here. Let's switch over. See, that one lines up much more accurately on the beat. 
All right, we got one more, and then we're done torturing you with the audience participation. This was a little slower. This was a little longer. Um, let's see what we can do with this. All right, here's the first loop. Joy, how are we doing on time? It's 7.50. No, I'm not. You play the all that break over there? <laughs> yeah. All right, so as we discussed, groove to me is the feel of the rhythm or of the human element. Um, some notes, some hits are slightly ahead and some fall after. And like I said, this is not an error. This is actually um, something that a lot of people really try to get within their music. Some people specifically try to make their hits slightly off the beat if they want something more like a hip-hop like feel, and in jazz, to get more of that feel, you actually do it a little ahead of the beat. And drummers especially, they really spend a lot of their time trying to hone in on grooves of certain particular genres that they're trying to emulate. And basically, this is also a common criticism in electronic music. And one of the main criticisms is that electronic music, specifically drum machines, cannot group. They have an inability to group. Why do people say that? And the main rebuttal that people have with that is that because each step is given an equal value. So does this mean LSTJs not be humanized in groove? Oh, wait, actually, one is one not. Full screen. Oh, no. Going down. So like I said before, uh, oh. so does this mean that SDJ cannot be humanized? When I said before about ticks, each single step or each line has six ticks, so that means that they each have the same equal value. This this does not mean that, but if each like like I just said, if each step has the same value rate, then the intervals between each sixteenth note will be the same. Each you know, each sixteenth note having six ticks. Therefore, we have to find a way to change the value weight per line, and the answer to that is the groove screen. So if you have um, your Game Boy, I encourage you to boot it up right now, because I'm going to rock out the emulator, and we're going to do this. Yeah, there's the D command. I didn't get necessarily into that too much, but that's a completely different approach. I actually learned um, the groove screen before the event. When, um, when I started messing around with the groove screen, uh, Chris Kaiser, um, another amazing chip musician, um, he uh, kind of looked at me funny. He was like, why are you doing all this mapping just through D commands? And I was like, I don't know, I'm probably just masochistic or something. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. I'm going to load up the emulator. So you have your game board with you. I encourage you to boot up LSDJ and boot up a brand new song. Well, 
let him get out of this building. Nice. Wait, are you going to give me another You have the fabled animal style on this DJ and I'll steal all of his tricks. And just give it to me. Alright, so what I'm going to do to make sure that we're all on the same page right now is I'm going to load a brand new thing, a brand new job with you guys. There we go. So if we're right here on the song screen, the first thing to do to get to the groove screen is that we hold select and we press down. This brings us to the groove screen. Now what you'll see at the top left is that it says groove zero zero. What this means is that this groove right now will be basically applied to all of your channels. So if you've made a song and you never messed around with your groove screen, your each line is going to be six ticks per, or each line is going to have six, six ticks. And you see right here that there's two sixes right now, and this represents um, the number of ticks per line. So right here, it says, I'm, I'm pointing at the screen and realize that you guys can't even see where I'm pointing my finger. But here, aha, I have a mouse. Six ticks for line zero, six ticks for line one, and this kind of works like the volume command in tables. So what it does is that it starts at the top, goes down to each subsequent number, and then when it hits a blank slot, it starts over again from the top. So six, six, right here, if I were to cut and paste that, means that it's gonna be six for every single line. So six, six groove would mean that this would be exactly the same, and it would be double worship. <laughs> so here we go, 6-6, six, six, each one per line, and what is interesting to note about LSDJ is that it has a built-in formula for creating swing, and this is what most people use the groove screen for. For each group of two 16th notes, you can alter the swing. What you do is basically, you go to the first of the two 16th notes, you hold A, and you press up or down. And what this does is that it will add a tick to one of the 16th notes and will subtract a tick from the other 16th note. And this works in groups of two. So if you had, if you were to cut and paste this, if I were to do that, if I were to hold A on the first 16th note and make this a groove 7 5, and then this one, a groove 8 4, what this means is that line 0 would have 7 ticks. Line 1 with 5, line 2 with 8, and line 3 with 4. And then, because it's going to hit this empty slot, it's going to start from the top again. So what this is now implying is that this is what your entire phrase is going to look like. And it looks scary, but it's really not that bad. And for each group of two 16th notes, you see it has a swing value over there on the to the right, right here. Um, and percentage, there is the amount of percentage of swing. I don't understand necessarily what that means. Like it may just be um, the division, but don't mess around with that. I don't mess around with that too much. You can also actually hold A, press left or right on each individual um, line. However, I strongly suggest that you don't do this unless you really know what you're doing, because what you're basically doing is that you're altering the matrix or something. What you're basically doing is um, you need to make sure that this entire phrase will add up to 96 ticks. And the reason for that is because if you were to make a custom groove screen here, and now I do that, and now that makes it 97 ticks. And if I were to be having that on that groove on the hi hat channel. And if I were to switch over and use Groove 01 on the bass channel, this would be basically implying that Groove 01 is going to have 96 ticks, and Groove 00 is going to have 97 ticks. So what this means is that when you're playing your song, one of your channels will actually get out of time with the other one. And that can be a cool effect, but over time it will sound horrible. Trust me, I found out the hard way. Sounds terrible. So let's basically do an example now with this. So let's um let's keep groove zip groove six six on zero on zero zero. Let's go into the noise panel and let's put hi hats on each sixteenth note. So I'm gonna make a new pattern or new phrase or chain 
Okay, we'll call it. Let's see that. Double tap A. Select and write. I'm going kind of fast. If anyone um, wants me to slow down, just, just holler at me. I can't really look over there. I'm looking up like, oh, some, this guy over here. Double tap A to make a new phrase. Go over to the phrase. And we're going to make some hi-hats. Um, I'm not going to... Whoa! I'm not going to pay too much attention to sound design, and that's a completely different tutorial, but um, I'm just going to do some real basic stuff. Double tapping it, moving over, let's make it hi hat. Do like A1. Um, I like to get a little uh, like snappy, so I bring the length down. Like the. That's where we're Now I'm going to put a hi hat on every single tick, or every single line. Now, if we let that play, that's going to give that constant 16 time. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four. And okay, that's very basic. Yeah, we mess around with that. Um, nothing too special now. But if we let that play, and as I said before, group zero zero works as a default for all the channels. So um, even though I didn't necessarily edit the group that's still applying to the phrase that we made. So I'm going to let that play. And you can see it's actually showing a cursor of where it's going. So it starts at the top and it's going down and starting over again. So it has this kind of, it looks like it's bouncing over that. So it's actually repeating. If I were to hold A on the first 16th note and edit the swing, we'll start to really feel and hear the difference. See, that's a little bit of swing, just holding A and pressing up. A little more extreme swing. A little more. And there it starts to get almost a little too intense. There you can't even tell because the tick of the, the tick value of the first line is overpassing the second. So you can't even hear the second note in that one. I usually do like around eight four or seven five. And if you press down you can get this kind of inverse swing, which I've never actually done in a track, but um, it's a it's a weird feel. Do I think he did something like that actually? Line six? Line six? Oh, that's a good one. Anyway, yeah, let's um, continue implementing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a basic base. Let's just make it real short. 50% um, pulse width. And let's make a quarter notes. So it'll be acting like a metronome to us. Activate that with the noise channel. Now you can see there's, there's going to be a problem if we edit the swing. You won't hear it necessarily because there's quarter notes, but if I were to edit the swing, you'll hear it just on the noise channel, which is fine. But say if we had something that was like. See, now we have the swing on the bass drum and the hi hat. Which is cool by itself, but what if you didn't want that? What if you wanted to make space? Alright, so we did that. And that sounds kind of cool, everything's locked together. But what if we didn't want it to lock together? What we would actually do is the groove command. And the groove command is GXX. So what you do is you go into your phrase, you add a G, and this value will be the value that's in the top left. So that's his groove zero zero. Um, let's use groove zero one because we want this bass, or I want this bass drum to be or this bass note to be straight. So now that's going straight. That's just going straight in sixteenths. Now if I were to switch up here, put G zero zero. So this is doing groove zero zero, and the other pattern is doing groove zero one. And this is something that I believe only an MSDJ can do as a tracker. I've messed around with other trackers, and they can't edit the groove or number of ticks per line per channel in any tracker. And um, I think Renoise, what it basically lets you edit is it's called the speed, and a lot of times it'll say speed six, but that affects all of the channels at once. It doesn't let you edit the groove or the tick amount 
per channel. So this is something that really keeps me interested in LSDJ because you can completely, you can completely feel the change the feel of each individual instrument. How are we doing? You guys following along? So it's actually going to go twice as fast now. And this is how you do 30 second notes. So I'm going to put in something stupid. Do that. Oh, we're going to make it fast. This is stupid. That's stupid fresh. There we go. Yeah. This is probably going to sound horrible. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. So what we're doing now is that you can see that in pulse one we have one phrase, and in pulse two we have two phrases. And the reason for this being is because for them to now be in perfect time, if we're having the speed of pulse two, it has to be twice the length for it to equal everything else. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, we're so what we're going to do is now at the groove commands, and I forget what actual groove we use. Not three four. Groove two. Oh, where is my three three? Th groove three. Groove three. Yep. Uh, I want it to be groove two, so I'll just do this. And you can remember it. Groove three. There we go. Groove two. So now if I put groove two, this is going now going to be 30 second notes because it's twice as fast. Actually, I want these to be higher. So. Sounds awful. <laughs> Alright, so let's play them together. Now we're going to have this ridiculous, crazy whack. We got the drummer on hi hats doing swing time. We have him being. Uh, Straight 16th, and then this guy shredding on 30 second notes. <laughs> yeah. And that's basically how you can trick um, LSDJ into doing a lot of really interesting stuff. Joey, how are we doing on time? I just have a little bit of musical examples if we want to do that. Close it up. Alright, wrap it up. Well, that's basically all I have then for a group. If you're interested in learning more about these or uh, any type of in-depth stuff, you can do a lot of stuff other than just 30 second notes. You can do triplets, you can do uh, fives, you can do groups of seven. Oh, after I said that, now you're interested. <laughs> all right, I'll show one quick example. Um, this is a, a semi-release song called Flow. And there's a lot of very interesting group things I did here. Let that boot up. Well, I was actually, there's even a, there's a marked crazy one here, but this one's the most, um, the most cohesive. I'll just let this part play. Wave channel. Wave 
samples going on at the same time as the bass. But it's also going very quickly because I have this one and one I have the group on. I have it at 3-3, so this one's going twice as fast. So you can see that one's just going by really, really quickly. I have D commands here. This is a different um, this is a different topic, but I have D commands here to basically delay the triggering of that one because if I didn't have that D command there. I don't know if you hear, but the, the decay of that first bass drum is there. I'll bring it in back. You can kind of hear the bass drum a little bit more. The decay grows. Oh, crap. Oh, which one's my groove? There we go. And as I said before, this chain looks huge because it's going at twice the speed as the other stuff. So if I play them all together. This one, um, there is a whole philosophy I have where you can actually get rid of tables and not worry about using or running out of tables if you use a groove 0, 1, 1. And the reason for that is because basically tables work at the speed of one tick per line. So if you actually started messing around with groove 1, 1, on cylinder channels, or something maybe not as fast, maybe 2-2, two, two, you can actually trick people into thinking that you're doing crazy arpeggios, but you're not, such as in this example. still make custom arpeggio. And what's interesting is that this is not, if I were to make a table, if I were to make an arpeggio, it, if I were to use that same table, it would be that same arpeggio, it would be that same voicing. But with this, I can have each individual phrase be a different voicing. So here, I'll just play that like that, and score by really fast. But they're each, each one is different chords. If I were to do that in tables, I'd be wasting four tables. But that's just right there by itself um, in just phrases. And, um, <laughs> um, and you can basically still mess around with it too. If you have a high, if you have a very high speed, you can still put commands on there. What I basically did is um, putting O commands. So I had the panning. I don't know if you can really tell, but there's there's panning going on in between each one. I'll change the group. They can hear it more. Yeah, you can hear it more now. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, that's what hardware sweep is? I always wonder what that is. Well, that's a different time. We can talk about that. We can learn about that later. Um, yeah, that's basically all I got. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to um, hit me up. I actually might throw the save of these files on my Facebook page, if you're interested. Um, it's facebook.com slash Anova. Um, I might throw the presentation the PowerPoint presentation up there too. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in learning any more about groups or dorky math, um, just hit me up. Uh, do we have any questions before we switch over to open mic? No? Yeah.